Darren Levine here, and this is what I'm calling the Legends of Light. This isn't so much a shootout as it is a case study in how far we've come in low light abilities in our cameras. So we are starting off with the EX1, which really kind of set the new benchmark for low light ability. When it came out, we all marveled at how well it looked in really, really low light conditions. And I was like, wow, I'm never gonna need more sensitivity than this. But then the DSLRs came around headed by the 5D, so well, I guess most might say, because they give us even more sensitivity and even more clarity um, in certain ways because of all the low light ability. And now we've got the Super 35 actual video bodied cameras. For the Canon side, it's the FS series, and for the Canon side, it's the C series. And I'm sure other manufacturers are working on or have already come out with their own versions. So. What we're going to do is we're going to see how long we can keep my girlfriend strapped into a chair for and we're going to point all these cameras at her and we're going to go and just shoot some test shots. Now, things to keep in mind. What did I choose to use for my settings? Well, on the EX1, I'm using the Marvel Profiler, one of them. It's been one I've used for most of my gigs. It's a well-balanced profile and it looks good. Next, on the 5D, I chose CineStyle. Now, I'm sure many of you are saying, why didn't you use a flat or super flat or whatever the number of other ones out there are? Well, quite simply, uh, it's my shootout and I just chose to use that. It's, this is not a you know, comparison where we're thinking that, that an extra profile a little bit is gonna help out one of the cameras edge out the other cameras. No, this is about big differences in low light ability. So, cine style, flat, it would all make very little difference in my opinion. So, then the C camera, which you're looking at me on, the C100, I chose to use the Canon Log. Now, you'll notice when we're shooting that at the same settings of the 5D and the C100, that it looks like the, for some reason the C100 is less exposed. That's because of the log. It's basically preserving the highlights, preserving the shadows, the absolute darks, at the expense of bringing down all the midtones. So that's why it looks like it's lower exposure. I could have gotten a much more equivalent if I shot in the wide DR. But as you'll see, I got a lot of little points of light around the image. I wanted to see how well that they can be preserved. So let's get right to it. Let's see how long we can keep her. Oh, one thing I should mention is I gave the EX1 a little bit of an advantage. I gave it about a two stop advantage by keeping it wide open at 1.9 while keeping the 5D and the C100 at an F4. Why did I do this? because I didn't have any matching lenses that were faster for either camera that maintained the same field of view. So, let's get right into it. Say hello to Karina. I want you to keep in mind that the actual room by eye looks kind of like the EX-1 does right now. And we're also gonna boost up the gamma so you can see the little granules. I want you to keep in mind she's being lit by a pro, a low eye light, which is a 100 watt bulb dimmed down to about five or 10%. Now going right up to 3200, which is really the most I would want to use the 5D2 on, and 12 on the EX1, which is the most I would usually want to use that on. Because you can see by the gamma boost how noisy they are starting to look. Now let's go to 6400, which is something I'll shamefully admit I used on the 5D once or twice. Never had to go to 18 on the EX1, but I'm sure some people have gotten use out of it, even though, as you can see, it looks pretty dirty. Now for a little curve here, just to see how much we can push these internal codecs and a little color correction to push it a little more. I didn't spend a whole lot of time on the color correction or the curve, so yeah, don't look too much into that. Jumping up to 12,800. Now this is the most I would like to use the C100 on to maintain as much detail as possible. But as you can see, the 5D, I'd never heard of anybody actually using this, as you can see why does not look very pretty. Draw on the curve, makes it look a little more acceptable, but you can see the C100 just looks really great, even with some color correction. All internal codecs again. Now we're gonna jump to 20,000 on the C100. At this, you, this uh, you are losing some detail, as well as if you shoot 16,000. So, you do lose detail, but as you can see, it doesn't look like garbage. If you really have no other options, it can save you. But try and stay under 12,800 to maintain as much detail as possible. Got your curve, got your color correction. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn that light off and we're just gonna give her a candle to play with. Now watch as she puts it on one side of her face how, much, how little light there is on the other side of the face. There's really almost no light there whatsoever. The camera's really inventing light. 
So we got the gamma to bring out the detail, the granules. Got rid of that, give you some curves. Now for that color correction. And yeah, <laughs> it really is quite marvelous what we got these days. And keeping in mind the EX1 does have that two-step advantage right now. That's why it still doesn't look terrible as compared to these two cameras. Now I threw in some sharpening just to push the codex a little bit more. Just a little sharpening. And now what we're going to do is bring the C100 up to f1.8. Just so you can see, just so much light. It makes it look like the living room's got like all its lights on, which it does not. It looks darker than the EX1 does at the top right now. And as you can see, when I put the curves on, I accidentally left my computer monitors on, which is giving her face a blue cast. Yeah, sorry about that. But yeah, that's it. Yes, the C100 looked great. It should. It's by far the newest of any of the cameras that we looked at. So the one thing I always wanted to mention right after going into low light ability cameras is that just because your camera doesn't need as much light does not mean you should forego thinking about lighting altogether. I still have to think about placing this light and uh, things in the background. You still got to think about lighting unless you're in a completely uncontrolled situation. So if you had the opportunity to, add and think about lighting. So these cameras just allow you to have less wattage, not no wattage. So the other thing I could mention is that for client-based stuff, which I do a lot, uh, you can get away with a lot more, such as in uncontrolled situations. Just this week I did a shoot with the, uh, the usable mod, Steven Mick, and we shot some C100s in an uncontrolled bar lighting. And we shot 12,800 practically the whole night. And he just literally got back to me saying the client loved every bit of it, so. Yeah, it's, it really is a great extra addition and allows you to not have to shoot, you know, super speed apertures and worry about focus the whole time. You can get away with more. But, you know, if you can use a lower ISO, usually that's a good idea. But this camera does give you the option to get away with a higher ISO. And the other thing I can leave you with is, well, this. This is not as pretty as Karina was, but it's another situation where C100 is set to an F4, 1 over 48, but instead of the log, this is the YDR. So, get a bit more out of the mid-tones at the expense of, I'm sure, a blown highlight or two in the back. But this light here is the CM160, which is right about 27 inches away from my face. It's got a tungsten filter on it, and it is the very lowest point of its dimmability. And so you can see what that means. Here is the highest point. Ow. It's going back down right now, yeah. So not on the blind, I'll tell you that this is shot ISO 20,000. So that's, you know, it's, it's not like you're bragging about the camera, but it's like, it doesn't look like garbage. It doesn't. And if you look in the shadows, I'm sure there's plenty of noise, plenty of noise back around there, but where is there not so much noise? The exposed parts. That sounded wrong. But say the whole image, if it was all actually exposed and no dark areas, it would look pretty darn good. Not to say that you should really be shooting tw ISO 20,000, but you know, if you don't have anything else to do, you don't have super speeds or you're just in a situation that you can't get any more light, the camera can save your, your ASS a little bit. I don't know if there's young kids watching my videos. But anyways, uh, the only thing I'm gonna mention is that these Christmas lights, there's some overhead, and the ones back there, there's a whole cluster of them in that corner, that's why it's bright. They're actually on a dimmer and they're at about half their brightness. So that gives you another idea of what's going on in this frame. But that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed. I am very much enjoying my new C100. I actually just sold my EX1. I'm going to be selling my 5D because I think it might be able to do everything I need a camera to do. So hope that's useful to you. I don't know why I mentioned stuff like that, but you know, I mentioned stuff. So. Darren Levine, VideoHall.com. I'm getting out of here.